Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahushar, Ba'ashem, Chakwadash. Yahweh, be named Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba'in, Ha'da, Shem, name, Yahweh Shai, be named only begotten Son, meaning He delivered, He saves. Chakwadash, Holy Spirit. Double honors to the Apostle of the Great Muslim, never well. Peace and blessings unto the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all. Back at when I listen to the spirit of power, Yahweh Shemashai, Lord willing, this video is edifying. All right, so I want to get into this topic of, uh, you know, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Yahweh Shemashai knows how to deliver you from your different trials, your tribulations, your temptations. If you're of the godly, okay, if you're wicked, you know, you're going to fall into mischief. But if you're righteous, even though you may fall short of temptations every now and then, the Lord is still going to deliver you overall. You're not going to taste that second death. As the scriptures say, he that overcometh shall not taste the second death, which the second death is the nuclear missiles. Okay. Proverbs 24 and 16. For a just man follows seven times and rises up again. But matter of fact, let me start at uh, verse 15. Proverbs 24 and 15. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. And that's what it is. You got wicked people who try to spoil the resting place of the righteous, man. Okay, you got wicked people who try to you know, uh, pretty much set a snare and a trap before the righteous, man. Okay? Before those who are really sincerely follow after Yahweh Mashiach. You got people who watch for the elect's downfall, who want to see the elect lose, who want to see the finger pointed at them, man. Okay? So the Lord is telling the wicked, don't lay in wait for the righteous, right? Because just because you might see the elect, quote unquote, fail in the flesh every now and then, you know, it might make you want to be like, ha. See, I told you, you know, aha, the Lord spoke about people who say aha, right? And that's what they did to our Lord Yahweh Shai when he was on that cross. They spat on him. They pierced him. Okay. They slapped him. Okay. You know, they humiliated him, try to make fun of him at least. But Yahweh Shai understood his purpose. He understood. But at the same time, you know, even if you still stay focused, people talking shit to you does play a role, man. Okay, people can try to sit here and say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words never hurt me. That's a lie, man. Okay, words can hurt you, and many people have slipped with the with, with the tongue more than with the edge of the sword, man. Okay, so slipping with the tongue is a big thing, man. So trying to humiliate or to talk or to murmur against or to persecute the elect of Yahweh Shemal Shai, lay not in wait. Okay, because why? Proverbs twenty four. And verse 16, for a just man follows seven times. So you you might go off a completion amount of times, man. Okay, we have we have manifold sins and transgressions before the Lord. That's why Yahweh had to die for us, man. Because we if not, we would have never made it. Okay. And it says, and riseth up again. Right. That's the restoration. That's the resurrection, man. The Lord is raising us up back from the dead. The dry bones are being raised up back from the dead, man. We were spiritually dead as a nation. But when we, when the Lord woke us up into this truth and delivered us out of the temptation of this world, we've been risen up back again, man. Okay? It says, for a just man falleth seven times and rises up again. So those seven times is not literally seven times. It's not saying you're only going to go off seven times. No, it's talking about a completion amount of times. The number seven represents completion. Just like Isaiah 4 1 says, seven women shall take hold of one man. That's talking about completion, man. It's not literally seven women. Okay? Seven represents completion. It says, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. That's right. The wicked shall fall into mischief. So you thinking the righteous is going to fall into mischief, but no. You the wicked is going to fall into mischief. Why? Because Yahweh Shmashai knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations. But for the wicked, they're going to be reserved unto their day of their punishment, man. A good precept for that. Let's get this real quick. Uh, 2 Peter 
chapter 2 and verse 8. It says, for that righteous man. Oh, let me start at verse 6. 2 Peter 2 and 6. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensemble unto those that after should live ungodly. Right. So what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? America is going to follow in like fashion, but double. America is going to get a worse judgment than Sodom and Gomorrah. Yahweh said, whichever city does not hear you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom in the day of judgment. You know, then that city which doesn't hear you. And this place doesn't hear us, man. This place is full of wickedness. America is known as the daughter of Babylon, man. So America is going to get a worse judgment than Sodom and Gomorrah because scriptures speak about how the wickedness and the evils have increased, man. Okay, Sodom and Gomorrah, believe it or not, Sodom and Gomorrah was more upright than America, man. As wicked as Sodom and Gomorrah was, man. Okay, so you can only imagine what type of judgment the Lord is about to bring on this place, man. Verse 7, and deliver just lot. We represent just lot. Lord willing, we be a part of the elect. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, we're of the elect. We represent just lot, okay? And some people might say, oh, lot isn't an Israelite. But lot is still going through the seed line of Abraham, and lot still received the how Bashmal Shai, man, okay? And lot coming back in the reincarnation, he would be an Israelite because it said, just lot. There's no heathen that is just, okay? A heathen could do something that's upright. All right. But at the end of the day, the only just or upright people, so to speak, is the nation of Israel. OK. The heathen are going to learn of our ways, though, in the kingdom. OK. Now it says and deliver just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Right. And that's what we are today, man. We see these niggas out here. We're vexed with their conversation. We're vexed with the way they conduct themselves, man. OK. It's filthy. You see these sons of Belial all over the place, man. OK. These wicked men and these wicked women out here, you know, being, uh, uh, you know, doing drugs, smoking cigarettes and shit. You know what I'm saying? All types of shit, man. Okay. Following after idols, following after wickedness, all types of manner of wickedness, man. And, and, and the thing about it is, yeah, we all go off, but in their mind, they don't have any desire to repent. They want to continue in their wickedness, man. And it's vexing. You see these sodomites out here? That's vexing, man. You see a grown-ass man dressed like a fucking woman? That's vexing, man. Okay? Just like what Lot had to witness, man. Okay? So what do you think the Lord... See, see if we get vexed and, and our anger is not perfected in this flesh, so if we get vexed, how much more the Heavenly Father? Scripture says how the Most High is angry with the wicked every day. Imagine being mad at some nigga every day. Eventually, you're going to want something to happen to him, man. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, how about you going to destroy this place, man? Okay? With the grievous destruction. 2 Peter 2 and 9. I'm going to read verse 8 again. 2 Peter 2 and 8. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Right. Okay, actually, that might have been the first time I read it. But nonetheless, verse 9. It says the Lord, so pretty much the Lord, uh, everything that the niggas was doing in Sodom and Gomorrah, that was vexing unto Lot, man. Okay? And it's the same thing now in these times, man. Seeing, seeing it, man, I was at a supermarket and I seen a freaking Edomite dude. He had like plastic surgery on his nose. And it's like, man, you could just tell he was Sodom. That's vexing. Okay? And then you see the, the, the lady in the store, she's giving out samples of meat, but the shit is like pork and swine. That's vexing. You look on the shelves, you see they're showing shrimp. That's vexing. Okay? You know, this world is wicked, man. All right? But at the same time, you got to endure through it. You got to endure through it. And you got to, you know, keep your emotions in check. Because, of course, you can get zealous and be mad and be like, you going off. And you're technically not wrong. But it's not always wise to rebuke, to, to, to act out of zeal. Okay? Of course, you need a form of zeal. To have godliness, of course. But it's like, don't let your zeal get you into a, into a sticky situation, man. You know, learn how to be spiritually strategic and calculated. Learn how to rule your spirit. You know, because yes, this shit is vexing. But, you know, if you always react off your emotions, that might get you into some trouble, man. Okay? Second Peter 2 and 9, it says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. And to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Right. So if you're of the elect, the Lord knows how to deliver you out of temptations, man. 
okay? But if you're on the unjust, the Lord is going to reserve you to the day of evil. He's going to reserve you to that day of destruction, man. Perfect scripture to back that up. Uh, Proverbs 16 and 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Right. So the wicked is created for the day of evil. You got people out here literally created to be missile food, man. The scriptures say how the people shall be as fuel for the fire. There's people literally created to be missile food, man. All right. Second Ezra says the world that is created now was made for many, but the world to come for few. Okay. So there's people literally created to be destroyed. All right. First Peter 2 and 8, it says, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Right. So two thirds were appointed to be disobedient and stumble at Yahweh Shai, man. And if you stumble at Yahweh Shai, then you stumble at the scriptures. Because two thirds, they'll claim they have a connection with the Most High, which in a certain degree they do. They have a zeal, but not according to knowledge. In order for you to get the true knowledge out of the scriptures, okay? Yahweh Shai unlocked the seals. So now Yahweh Shai's spirit has to be given unto you. And you have to apply Yahweh Shai's spirit upon your, you keep that discipline, you know, that Yahweh Shai told us to keep. You have to apply that in your life so that you may obtain the knowledge from the scriptures. And that knowledge of the scriptures is what's going to bring us into salvation. The scriptures say, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. And afterwards, thou shalt receive me. Roughly paraphrasing, man. Okay. Apostle Paul said, you know, this gospel raised Yahweh Shai from the dead. Roughly paraphrasing. So that salvation is coming through this knowledge, man. This is how, this is the, this is the key to the kingdom. But if you don't have Yahweh Shai's spirit in you, you're not going to receive that key. Okay. Scriptures speak about the key of David. You know, Yahweh should say, hey, he has the keys of hell and death. So the Lord can resurrect us from the dead, man. But you need to have this knowledge first. Right? So our people, they submit to their own righteousness. Yeah, you got a lot of two-thirds who read the Bible. Okay, but they don't read the Bible in the spirit of Yahweh Shai. So therefore they stumbled. Okay, like King David said, let their table be made a snare. And that which was for their welfare, uh, you know, a trap unto them. Roughly paraphrasing, man. So the scriptures are supposed to be for our people's welfare, but they stumble at the scriptures because they don't have faith in the doctrine of Yahweh Bashem Okay, Hebrews 4 and 2 goes into that. All right. Verse 9, it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. It's 1 Peter 2 and 9, Salakia. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should shew forth the praise of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So if the Lord called us out of darkness, what does that mean? He delivered us out of those temptations. Okay, but the wicked, like it says, Proverbs 16 and 4, how they're going to be uh, made for the day of evil, man. That's another precept to back that up. Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 22. Let the multitude perish which was born in vain and let my grape be kept in my plant for with great labor have I made it perfect. Let me start at verse 21. Second Ezra 9 and 21. It says, and I saw and spared it greatly and have kept me a grape of the cluster and a plant of a great people. Right. You know, because scriptures say how we would turn to a degenerate vine unto the Lord, man. Okay. But at the same time, Yahweh Shai spared members of that vine through his mercy you know Yahweh Shai being the uh, arrowhead so to speak of the Lord's mercies Let's see if I can find this precept Sirach Ecclesiastes 47 to 22 where the Lord will never leave off his mercy neither shall any of his works perish neither will he abolish the posterity of his elect the posterity of Posterity means like your children, your family, your lineage after you. Okay? So the Lord said he will not abolish the posterity of his elect. And ultimately, the Lord's elect is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if you can receive it. We stem from that line. So that makes us of the elect too. Like the Lord said, Isaiah 44, Israel, mine elect. Jacob, in whom I have chosen, call him Bashem Shai. You know? So that's the point. Okay, that's why Yahweh Shai said in Luke 13 and 28, you shall see Abraham. Let me let me read it. Luke 13 and 28. It says, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of Yahweh Shemeshai, and you yourselves thrust out, and they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south, and shall sit down in the kingdom of Yahweh Shemeshai. And behold, there are last which shall be first, and there are first which shall be last. That's it. So that's who the elect is ultimately. Okay, of course, the elect is of the 12 tribes. You know, Revelation 7 chapter, of course. You know, but the covenant was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That covenant was given by promise, not by works. Okay? So the elect starts with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if you can receive it. Really, the elect starts with Yahweh Shai. Okay? But the Lord gave that promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and various other many Yahweh Shai prophets after them, man. You know? And of course, the 12 tribes make up the elect as well, because the 12 tribes are the posterity of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why it says, so Ecclesiastes 47 to 22, but the Lord will never leave off his mercy, neither shall any of his works perish, neither will he abolish the posterity of his elect and the seed of him that loveth him. And he, it says, he will not take away. Wherefore he gave a remnant, which the remnant represents the elect, the one third, okay? Unto Jacob and, unto, and out of him a root unto David, right? And that root of David is Yahweh Shai. So through Yahweh Shai being left and the left and the remnant, the elect, the one third being left, that is the repopulation. That is the restoration of the nation of Israel. Two thirds that are going to die this side are going to be through the loins of that remnant. Revelation 22 and 16. I, Yahweh Shai, have sent, this is red letter. Revelation 22 and 16, I, Yahweh Shai, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So Yahweh Shai, he's that root of David. Going back to uh, Isaiah, the 11th chapter. Okay. Second as 8 and 1, and he answered me saying the most high hath made this world for many but the world to come for few i will tell thee a similitude ezra's as when thou askest the earth it shall say unto thee that it giveth much mold whereof earth and vessels are made but little dust that gold cometh of even so is the course of this present world right so precious the precious sons of zion are likened unto fine gold the lord say he's going to make a man more finer than the golden wedge of ophir so the israelite man of the elect is going to be a high commodity in these times to come through the spirit and power of yahweh shemeshai okay the Israelite man is going to get his glory back, you know, and the Israelite woman, too. All right. We're going to get our glory back as a nation. But the Israelite man most definitely has been trodden down. OK, because, you know, that's whom the Lord, you know, set up to be the head of the, of, of, of it through the spirit and power. Of course, Yahweh Shai being that chief cornerstone, man. OK, but, you know, the women have their glory, too. OK, we're going to be glorified as a nation of Israel. The last shall be first and the first shall be last, man. OK. And it says, Second Ezra 8 and verse 3, there be many created, but few shall be saved. That's it. So a lot of people have been created for this present world, but only few are going to be saved. That's why I should say the slain of the Lord shall be many. Okay. Jeremiah 25 says how the slain of the Lord is going to be from one end of the earth, even unto the other. Just like how the elect are going to be from one end of the earth, even unto the other, man. Okay, so that's the point of that right there. This is our uh, first Chronicles chapter 18 and 13. It says, And he put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's servants. So, King David, he was known as a man after the Most High's own heart. He had slaves. Okay, Esau Edom was King David's slave at one point in time in history. And guess what? It's about to happen again. Okay, it's about to happen again. Just like how you devils had us in slavery, guess what? You're going back into slavery, your damn self. Okay? So enjoy, enjoy it while it lasts. You know, because it's good, it's gonna go away quicker than you think, man. And you know it. That's why you hurt. That's why you're gonna try to persecute the elect. Because you hurt. You want that blood, you want that uh that birthright back. You ain't gonna get it back, man. The most high is not a man that he should repent. Learn to accept it. <laughs> okay? But if I was eating my I'd probably be hurt too. I get it. This is uh, First Chronicles 
18 and 13, and he put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's servants. Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. So everywhere King David walked, how Bashmash preserved him, man. He had righteous angels by King David. Wherever he went, delivered him from death. You know, time and time again. There was even time where King David was out in war, and one of his men, you know, uh, uh, pretty much got him out the way and slew the dude about to kill him, man. That was the Lord preserving him whithersoever he went. So, does not the scripture say in our Psalms? Because we're gonna get this, we're gonna get this blessing too. Lord willing, we be a part of that elect. Lord willing, we be a part of the house of David. Psalm thirty-four and seven: The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth him, delivereth them. Right. Read that again. Psalm thirty-four and seven: The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Can you imagine that? If you sincerely fear Yahweh Shemashai, guess what? You have legions of holy angels round about you, protecting you from all manner of evil, man. Even if you do fall short every now and then because you're in the flesh, that's just the way the game goes, so to speak. We're subject to vanity. So even if you might go off, guess what? Those angels are still around about you if you sincerely fear the Lord, man. That's powerful, man. That's powerful, man. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, man. And we're going to need that deliverance in the times of Jacob's trouble, man. We're going to need that deliverance, man. That's why it tells you in uh, Jeremiah 30. And that's what you're going to hear. You're going to hear a lot of weeping and wailing in Jacob's trouble, man. Okay? Jeremiah 30 and verse 5. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Yeah, we're going to need the Lord to deliver us from the temptations in the times to come, man. Okay? Because when Jacob's trouble comes, the hour of temptation is going to come, man. The hour of temptation is when the MOTB, the mark of the beast, gets implemented, man. Revelation 13 and 16. But what did the Lord say? Revelation 3 and verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. So since because we've been going through the sufferings of this truth, we've been going through, you know, the the, uh, the present distress. We've been enduring. We've been keeping discipline. The Lord is going to keep us from the hour of temptation. The hour of temptation is going to be the time frame in Esau Edom's rulership, his eon, where the, 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 the MOTB is going to get implemented, man. That C hip. Okay. And people are going to be forced all right, or either put to death if they don't take it, man. And that's why a lot of the elect at that time are going to be living off the grid, okay? And Esau's going to know it. He's going he's, he's gonna to know, okay? The devil's wiser than Daniel. There's no secret that can be hid from him. But Yahweh is going to deliver him. So if you do try to roll up on the elect, guess what? The Lord's going to lift up a standard against you devils, man. Revelation 3 and 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. And that's also the Lord delivering us from temptation. Revelation 3 and 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. And let me expound on that because you're going to have some people when they do get caught up and they get rolled on, they're going to snitch. But you're going to have some members of the elect who hold firm. Revelation 3 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. That's it. That's it, man. That's it. Jeremiah 30 and, and 6 Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins And as a woman in travail And all faces are turned into paleness Right, so just like how a man is supposed to Represent, you know, courage and strength and boldness Guess what, men are going to be like uh, uh, Laboring women in that day, man You're going to hear a grown man screaming like a woman In labor pains in that day, man That's the type of times we're coming to It's going to be like The Purge Have you ever watched that movie with The Purge? You know, Book of Eli, those are the times we're coming into. The Walking Dead, those are the times we're coming into, man. Okay? It's going to be bad. You know, the movie The Road, it's going to be worse than all that. Those are just a, a glimpse of the times we're coming into, man. Okay? It says, alas. Alas means woe. Woe means sorrow, distress, death, and destruction, man. Alas, for that day is great. So that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Referring to the elect of Jacob. Two thirds of Jacob is going to be destroyed in that time. But the elect of Jacob is going to be delivered out of it. Going to be saved out of it, man. And a part of that salvation is through the divine intervention. A big part of that. Even leading to the point where the missiles go off. Okay, there's going to be divine intervention 
with the strangeness of our salvation. We're going to get beamed up into this so-called UFOs. Yahweh Shem Shabbat Zah. Daniel 12 and 1. And at that time, talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, shall Michael stand up. Michael is the chief archangel of war. All right. Under our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Okay. The great prince was standing for the children of thy people. Talking about the elect. Because two thirds, they don't have this. They don't have the spot of the Lord's people. He tells them in the book of Deuteronomy. Also, Jeremiah, the Lord said, though Moses and Daniel stood from stood before me, yet shall not my mind be towards this people. You know, so two thirds spiritually are not the Lord's people, even though they are Israelites. They are technically the Lord's people. They're not the Lord's people spiritually. That's why the Lord said in Jeremiah nine, He's going to destroy the circumcised with the uncircumcised, because the house of Judah and Israel are uncircumcised in their heart, and the heathen are uncircumcised, in, you know, in their flesh. Roughly paraphrasing, man. Jeremiah 9, 24 through 25. Yes, they're technically Israelites. They're technically the Most High's chosen lineage, but spiritually, they're like the heathen. So they got to be destroyed on this side. But they're going to come back in the kingdom because they're still Israelites, you know? And the heathen even going to get their land back. But Esau's not going to get his land back. Esau's going to be exterminated. And Esau's land going to be given back to Judah. Okay? This is uh, Daniel 12. And my. And, Notice how it says Michael shall stand up. Michael is the chief archangel of war. And need I to mention that Jacob's trouble is going to be a time of war, man. Jacob's trouble is going to be a warfare time, a high warfare time. Martial law being enacted in the streets. Your policeman is going to be your military, man. It's going to be like Nazi Germany, but 10 times worse, man. People getting thrown into FEMA camps. People getting put to death. All types of shit. We're going to need divine intervention at times. Robot dogs. Robot killer dogs and shit, man. We're gonna need divine intervention. Pestilence. Don't be surprised. You know, I speak as a man. I speak as a man. I speak as a man. I ain't saying you know it's gonna happen, but don't be surprised if you if if you see zombies, man. Time of trouble the world has never seen before. Okay. So we need how about shine in these times, man. No if ands or buts. Okay. It says, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation to that same time. And at that time, that people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book, referring to the elect, written in the book of life. And that's because the Lord delivered them from these different temptations. Okay. First Samuel 26 and 24 says, and behold, as thy life was much set by this day in mine eyes. So let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord and let him deliver me out of all tribulation. That's right. King David prayed that for himself. You know, and that also goes upon the house of David as well. Because, you know, he had mercy on Saul, so he prays that the Lord have mercy on us, man. Okay? Because Saul was being wicked, but King David, King David had a right to quote unquote put him to death, you know, because Saul was being wicked, but he still had mercy on Saul, man. Okay? So he's like, just as I was merciful, let my let the Lord be merciful upon me and deliver me. And the Lord, and if the Lord delivers you from temptation, let, let's say Satan, let's say Satan moves you, slip of the tongue, you know. Speaking of Satan, let's say Satan moves you to do something wrong because you know, sometimes there's a bet in heaven against your soul. All right, you know, Satan desires to sift us as wheat. Look what happened to Job, right? So sometimes Satan might move you to do something where you might potentially go off, but the Lord might make you not do it. First Corinthians ten and thirteen, okay. He gives you a way to bear it that you may be able to escape the temptation. Roughly paraphrasing. Right? So, but hey, you know, ultimately, two thirds going to be given over to their lust. The Lord's not going to give the elect over to their lust. First Kings 1 29, it says, And the king swear and said, As the Lord liveth, they have redeemed my soul out of all distress. That's right. Yahweh Meshach redeems the elect soul out of all distress. He's delivering the godly out of temptation. Matthew 6 and 9. As this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That's right. So, like I said, lead us not into temptation, into temptation, but deliver us from evil, man. That's what we need to be praying for ourselves, man. The Ottawa Palal, you know, the Lord's Prayer. Okay.
Luke 22 and 28, it says, Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. So just like Yahweh Shai was tempted, the, the, <clears throat> the elect are going to be tempted as well. Two-thirds are being tempted too, but the thing about two-thirds, they're not falling after the ways of integrity through the spirit of power Yahweh Shai. They're falling after their own lusts. Yeah, the elect fall short every now and then, but Yahweh Shai justified them in the spirit. Okay? So you can't say anything against the Lord's elect. Um, let me see if I get a quick pre. This is uh, Hebrews chapter 4, starting at verse um, 14. It says, um, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Yahweh Shai, the Son of the Most High, let us hold fast our profession. So we got to hold fast to the truth. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Meaning that, you know, it's not like he's our high priest, but he doesn't feel what we're going through. It says, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. You see, so Yahweh Shah, he knows what we're going through. He understands what we're going through. He feels our emotions, you know. But he went through it too because he came in the flesh. The scriptures say he didn't take on the form of angels. He took on the form of the seed of Abraham, man. Roughly paraphrasing. So Yahweh Shah came in the flesh. Okay, and it also proves that he's the son of Isaac, or that he is Isaac, rather. 